What's up, ballers? We are back with some more NBA Live Mobile. So we didn't quite hit our like goal yet, but I wanted to go ahead and get a video out for you guys because I'm going to be busy later and I wanted to get it out today. Right now, we've got what I believe to be 100 Chance and Elite Player Packs stacked up. Once we're done with those, we're going to throw those gold players that we're most likely going to get into Elite Player Packs. So by the end of this, we're probably going to have opened... 100 gold players at least, we might get elites out of them, and 10 elite players. Seeing what we can get, I'm cleaning out my inventory as well, so you might see some things selling. But we're going to see what we can get, like I said earlier today. This is probably, I won't say it's the best program we've had in NBA Live Mobile so far, because there are downsides. One thing that's a little obnoxious is just that it's... Like, the way they did it was unnecessary, and it might be because of the live events. Honestly, I haven't even looked at the live events because I had no interest in playing them. Maybe you gotta play the live events to get the players, and then you gotta trade in the collectibles for the players and all this stuff. But, especially, like, if you're gonna have packs, instead of having packs with 50 collectibles in them for 25k apiece... Why don't you just give us packs with, like, three gold players for 10k piece? Because it's literally the exact same price, and that way I don't have to fill up my inventory with thousands of collectibles to actually get these things. It was a little bit obnoxious, so there's probably a little bit more efficient way to do it. And probably would have been nicer if it was more grindable. Like I said, I didn't actually even look at the live event, so maybe it is grindable and I just haven't checked it out. But... Overall, I'm definitely happy with the promo. It says that these are chance at an elite packs. I've got a feeling like from all the chances of at an elite packs that I've opened up this year, I don't think I've pulled a single elite out of one of them. So my hopes aren't very high that we'll pull one, but on the off chance that that was going to happen, I figured I would go ahead and open these up on camera just in case because you never know what we could end up pulling. Now, I think the highest overall that we can pull is an 84 overall. I'm not positive on that. But as far as I know, this is the first edition. Like, it says week one for Team of the Week. So this is basically a completely separate Team of the Week program from the other one that we had. This one has a silver logo. The other one had a green logo. So a completely different program. And I think it's going to need a completely different filter on the auction house as well. Because you have to search for each of these players specifically on the auction house. There may be some coin making methods out there that we could take advantage of as well. I'm probably going to look into that. If you guys have any that you're using right now and you'd like to help us out, drop those in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys are doing to make coins because ever since the auction house was restricted by EA, they took over it. It's become really, really difficult to make coins. I really haven't had any coin making methods that I've used. So essentially the coins that I've had have just pretty much dwindled until I totally ran out. So I probably spent way too much of them on one player. I don't even remember what the last player that I bought was after the auction house went bye-bye. Uh, but we're, we're doing what we can. I've actually heard rumors about coin sellers returning to NBA Live Mobile. If that happens, I'm not going to take on a coin seller. For a number of reasons, um, so probably the first reason is if I take out a coin seller, it's going to mean I'm required to make a certain amount of videos. And one of the things about me having a coin seller is that it really just made me make videos that I didn't enjoy making. Like I kept on forcing myself to make videos I didn't enjoy making at all. And so if I'm going to make videos for you guys, I want them to be videos that I actually enjoy making, not just because I know that I can get a little bit of money out of it. And I think that benefits you guys and me because you guys get the best possible content and I don't just get sucked into this for the money, which is which is not the reason I started making YouTube videos in the first place. Like I started making them because I enjoyed making them. I enjoyed being a part of the community and for me being like the coin seller turned it into a job and it's not bad to have a job. Like it's good being able to provide for yourself, but at the same time, another aspect of why I'm not going to take back coin sellers if they return to the game is that Basically, coin sellers are a big part of the reason the game is where it is right now. Now, obviously, the majority of the fault does go on EA because they're the ones basically, like, milking every last penny out of their consumers right now. Now, they haven't been doing that with this promo, but basically in every promo leading up to this, there was no way you could get any of the players unless you spent money on the game, which is, like... 
If that's the way it's going to be, don't call it a free-to-play game because it's not a free-to-play game when you play it that way. Uh, but at the same time, coin sellers reduce EA, EA's profits, and the more their profits are reduced, the more they need to make the money back, so they make it more money-grabby and all this stuff, and it's a vicious cycle. That never ends, and it just... Overall, I think it was negative for the game, so... Honestly, even if there hadn't been coin sellers uh, this year, I think the game still would have gone down the path that it went down. Maybe not as quickly, but it still would have gone down the path because that's what EA has done with all their games. They did it with FIFA Mobile. They did it with Madden Mobile. They're all money grabs, and you got to expect that to a certain extent, especially for a massive company like EA that's been in business so long. A lot of companies just end up getting to the point where... All they see are the numbers, and they don't really see their customers as customers anymore. They're really just money bags that they're trying to suck the money out of. So, uh, enough of my EA rants. We'll get back to opening the pack. So, it says these are chance at Team of the Week Elites. I've still got 95 packs in my inventory. This is ridiculous. I have not seen an Elite so far, and I've got a feeling... That we're probably not going to see one. It says chance in Elite, but honestly, I don't even think there is a chance at one. I don't know that I've even... I think there was one program earlier this year that was chance in Elite that actually... I think it might have been the Fire and Ice promo. You had a chance in Elite. And people were actually relatively consistently pulling Elites out of those. It might have not even been a chance. It might have been a gold pack that had uh, just an opportunity to pull an Elite. But either way... In recent times, basically any time that you see something in NBA Live Mobile that says chance at, that's his way of saying it's possible, but it's not going to happen. Like, it's just straight up not going to happen because we've seen that over and over again. Like, I've, I've opened thousands and thousands of packs with chance at various things, and those things never happen. And I think that's pretty, pretty uh, agreed upon across the board, just... In case you're new to the game and didn't know how packs work in NBA Live Mobile, don't open chance at packs. Only open a pack if it's something guaranteed, and most of the time if it's guaranteed, then it's going to cost like $100, in which case, definitely not worth it. Nobody should ever spend $100 on this game. Like, think about, think about the fact you can get NBA 2K18, as many problems as NBA 2K18 has on console... You can get it for, what, 40, 50 bucks and have a great game, customizable everything, lots of different game modes, all this different stuff. And there are people that spend thousands of dollars on NBA Live Mobile, which hasn't improved in gameplay in a year and a half, somewhere around there. <laughs> and it, like, it's mind-boggling to me that people spend thousands of dollars on this game. And I understand wanting to be the best, wanting to have the best team, but, like... There's got to be something better you can spend your money on, guys. Like, even even as a YouTuber that was making a whole lot of money from coin sellers back when I did have my coin seller, I still didn't spend that much on the game because I was like, yes, I might make it back, but at the same time, I'm spending money on cards in a game that are going to disappear in a year and the gameplay isn't good. Does this really make sense? So... That's uh, that's just my thoughts on spending money in NBA Live Mobile. Like, I get it if you want to spend a few bucks here and there, but when they when they get to the point where they're offering a training pack for a hundred dollars, you gotta you gotta think to yourself, okay, why am I actually spending money? Like, if you actually spent a hundred dollars on a training points pack, you should go get help. <laughs> like, I don't I don't know any other way around that. Like. You have a serious issue if you want to spend $100 just to train up a player in a game. Um, and obviously it's your money. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money, but that's just my opinion. If you're going to spend hundreds of dollars, I would say spend it in the right place. So there are plenty of games out there that you could spend money on and really get your money back. I think one thing that has been talked about a lot, especially with the rise of the popularity of Fortnite is how well their model has done and how a lot of companies should look at it. Like, there is literally not a thing that's pay to win about Fortnite. You don't even have to buy the game. The game is free. It's the most popular game in the world, and they're still doing insanely well right now. And it's just because they're developing a product, and because they've done it so well, people want to spend that extra money. So... EA's kind of done the reverse. They've made a bad product, but in order to in order to succeed, you have to spend money on it. 
what uh, I believe it's Epic Games, the developers of Fortnite, have done is they've developed a great product. And because it's so great, even though you don't need to pay to win, people want to spend money on the game. So they'll buy skins, whatever it is. I don't even play Fortnite personally, but I know all these people spend like hundreds of dollars on the game just because they enjoy it so much. Like, basically, Fortnite is taking over Twitter, and it doesn't make any sense because no video game has ever done that before. But literally, my entire Twitter feed is all about Fortnite just because people love the game so much. And it's a free game. Like, they will never require you to spend money. I know there's a battle pass. I'm not really sure what that does. I would guess that's just to enter the rankings, but in every time that I've ever played Fortnite, I'd never spent a penny on it. So I played, like, one or two games, and it was it was fun. I honestly like Rules of Survival right now. And I think in order for me to play Fortnite, I would need to get a lot better at PC gaming. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now with Rules of Survival. And if I ever become a great player, then maybe I'll hop onto Fortnite. But for right now, I'm probably going to keep on sticking to Rules of Survival. So if you guys want to check that out, that is over on my other channel, Bobby Plays. Easy to find. It is linked on the front page of this channel as well, I believe. And holy crap, how many packs have I opened? Like, I'm trying to figure out. I've been sitting here clicking for a long, long time. We've got 51 packs. Now, some of these are being saved up for a variety pack opening. So, maybe it's not too many more, but holy crap. I feel like I've been talking to myself for the last hour and a half. And obviously, it hasn't been that long. But, oh my gosh. So many packs. Not one sight of it. Of, uh, blah, blah, blah. Of an elite in these chance at a team of the week elite so i would say if you guys are expecting to get elites finally coming to the end if you guys are expecting to get elites out of these uh you're probably going to be sorely disappointed i hate to tell you guys finally gonna get to the elite pack opening part sheesh i just talked my head off for the last like how long have i been recording 12 minutes oh my gosh <laughs> All right, time to get to the good part. This is what I've been waiting for. Now, that being said, I'm pretty sure there are only, like, five different cards that we can actually pull. But here we go. Let's see what we're going to get out of these packs. Bam, out of bio. I don't think I've pulled him yet. Let's see if he'll go into the Steven Adams set. Yes, you... Oh! Oh, we only need two more. We need Kent Bazemore and Lonzo Ball. All right, that's what I like to see. Well, maybe we can get crazy lucky and the rest of these players will be profit. If we can get those two right here. All right, we do get a Jabari Parker right there. I have heard that a lot of people are pulling Jabari Parkers, so we might be seeing quite a few of him. We get another Bam Adebayo. All right. Nothing that I'm really not expecting. I would guess that those last two are probably relatively rare. Let me get a screenshot of that as well. See if we can clutch this out. Actually, why am I saying clutch this out? We've only opened like a couple of our however many packs that we're opening. Maybe it's more than 10. Maybe I'm really bad at counting or bad at math. It, I mean, it's probably both of those, but it seems like I've got more than that many players worth, and I might end up throwing these players into wild cards if we don't get what we need to finish it off. Looks like we're going to be seeing a lot of those 80 overall, so probably going to have to buy Kent Bazemore or Alonzo Ball off the auction house. Yep. Lots and lots of Jabari Parkers, so we probably actually got lucky on that first pull when we ended up not pulling a Jabari Parker. Lots of, yep, those those 80 overalls love to show themselves right now, so probably the odds for Lonzo and Kent are not too high, and unfortunately, we don't have what we need. Now, we can throw these guys into the wild card sets. Oh my gosh, I'm one short. All right. How many do I need? I only need three more gold players. You know what? We're just going to go to the store. And I think all I need to do is open two of these, and that will get me five gold players, and that'll be all that I need to get one more gold player, or uh, one more elite player, and we can finish off the set, which is what I was trying to do anyways today. So we'll go ahead and do this. We only need three more. If we will actually, uh, maybe we'll open all of them. Nah, we'll just open the three that we need. No need for that nonsense. I'm not under any expectation that we're going to pull an Elite out of one of these because it seems relatively impossible. After opening, what do we open? A hundred of them? The odds are not great, guys. Here we go. Our last Elite player. If we could pull a Kent Bazemore or Alonzo Ball, that would be fantastic. 
but we get a Bam out of bio. That is perfectly fine. We're going to get both of these. So it looks like in total, if you're lucky, well, if you're lucky, it's only going to cost you probably like 500k to finish this set. But if you have luck like mine, that's going to cost you around a million coins to make sure you get everything that you need. Actually, probably closer to 1.2, I would say, rather than 1, because you are going to most likely need to get those wild cards. But we're going to throw those in there and get that 90 overall Steven Adams. One quarter of the way to our 96 Anthony Davis. We'll take a look at his stats real quick. What were his, what was that 89 inside shooting looking nice? 90 inside paint shot, 90 post shot, 93 dunking, 93 scoring with contact. That dude looks like a beast. Fantastic three point shot with a 39 for Steven Adams. And his rebounding's pretty decent as well. So that's going to be it for the video, guys. Hope you did enjoy it. Make sure to drop a thumbs up if you did. Let me, okay, he actually doesn't give any boost. That's a little bit disappointing. Yep, drop a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're new, and I will see you guys next time.